All right, second graders, we're going to read two chapters from Sideways Stories from Wayside School. We're going to read chapter 25, Jenny, first. So here is Jenny. Chapter 25, Jenny. Jenny came to school on the back of her father's motorcycle. She was late. Wayside School began at 9 o'clock. It was almost 9.30. She kissed her father goodbye and raced up 30 flights of stairs to Mrs. Jules's room. I'm sorry I'm late, Mrs. Jules, but my father's motorcycle lost a... There was nobody there. The room was empty. Hello? Hello? She cried. Mrs. Jules? Dana? Todd? Anyone? There was no one in the room. Maybe I'm early, Jenny thought. She looked up the clock. It was exactly 9.30. Oh, I hope they didn't go on a field trip without me. She looked out the window, but nobody was there. Not even Lewis. Jenny didn't know what to do. She sat down at her desk. She watched the second hand go around on the clock. It might as well catch up to I might as well catch up on my spelling, she thought. She opened her desk and took out her speller. M U D spells mud. Here it is, everybody. B L O O D spells black. I hope nothing happened to them. B L O O D spells blood, sorry. I hope nothing happened to them. B L A C K spells black. Jenny heard footsteps coming down the hall. She began to work very fast. H-A-C-K spells hack. S-M-A-C-K spells smack. Someone opened the door. Jenny turned around. Ah! She gasped. He was a man Jenny had never seen before. He had a black mustache and a matching and a matching attach case. Jenny jumped out of her seat. Get back to your seat, the man said. Jenny slowly sat down. The man walked over to her and sat down in Dana's seat, facing Jenny. He opened his attached case and removed some papers. What is your name? He asked her. Jenny, Jenny whispered. Jenny? The man repeated as if he didn't believe her. Well, it, it's actually Jennifer, but Jenny is short for that, said Jenny. Mm, I see, said the man. He took the speller from Jenny's desk. Jenny's name was written across the top. He put the speller in his attach case. Hmm. What are you doing here, Jennifer? He asked. This is my classroom, said Jenny. Are you sure? Said the man. Yeah, I think so. I, I mean, where's the rest of your class? The man asked. I don't know, said Jenny. Maybe they went on a field trip? No, said the man. They didn't go on a field trip. Well, I don't know where they are, Jenny cried. I was half an hour late today. And when I got here, everybody was gone. Really? Did something happen to them? The man didn't answer. He wrote something on a piece of paper. Tell me something, Jennifer. When you came to school today and saw nobody here, weren't you somewhat puzzled? Yes, yes, said Jenny. What happened to them? If you really are concerned and so puzzled, said the man, then why would you work on your spelling? I don't know, said Jenny. It would seem to me, the man said, that if a child came to school and nobody was here, they might play games or walk around or go home. But certainly not work on spelling, Jenny started to cry. I don't know what to do. I was late and I had to ride, a motor ride on a motorcycle and nobody was here. And now you're asking me all kinds of questions and I'm afraid that I, that what has happened to Dana and Mrs. Jules and Ronnie and Allison. The man didn't understand a word she said. Jenny heard more footsteps. The man got up and walked out the door. Open the door. Two more men came in. One had a black mustache, like the first, and the other man was bald. Jenny was frightened by them. Does she know? Asked the newcomer with a mustache. She claims to know nothing, the man answered. She says she was late today, and when she got here, everybody was gone. Do you believe her? The man with the bald head said. I'm not sure. She was working on her speller when I walked in. He reached into his case and took out Jenny's speller. He handed it to the man with the bald head. The bald man read Jenny's name across the top. Tell me, Jenny, he said. Why are you the only one here? I don't know, said Jenny. Has it ever happened before? He asked. No, never, said Jenny. He gave Jenny her speller. Put it inside your desk. Jenny put it away. I'm satisfied, said the man with the bald head. Okay, Jennifer, said the first man. You may go now. Jenny got out of her, her seat. 
Jenny, the bald man called. Jenny slowly turned around. Yes, she whispered. Next time, don't come to school on a Saturday. Well, that's a good one. All right, chapter 26, Terrence. Terrence was a good athlete, but a bad sport. Rondi and Allison were playing two square with a red ball. Can I play? asked Terrence. No, Allison replied. You have to let me play, Terrence said. Lewis says we have to share the balls. Well, we're not sharing with you, said Allison. Oh, just let me play. Let him play, said Rondi. Oh, right, said Allison. We'll play three square. You better play right. I will, said Terrence. Allison bounced the ball to Rondi. Rondi bounced it over to Terrence. Terrence caught it and kicked it over the fence. You have to go and get it, said Allison. Shut up, Dixie Cup, Terrence answered. Rondi ran to Lewis. DJ and Damien were playing basketball. Uh-oh, here comes Terrence, said Damien. Hey, let me play, said Terrence. Get lost, Terrence, said Damien. You have to share the balls. Lewis says so, said Terrence. Okay, but just throw it in the basket. Don't kick it, said Damien. First, Damien took a shot. I won't, said Terrence. First, Damien took a shot. It bounced off the backboard and through the hoop. Next, DJ took a shot. He threw it underhanded, way in the air. It came down through the hoop without touching the rim. Then, Terrence took a shot. He kicked it over the fence. Oh, come on, said Damien. Take a train, peanut brain, Terrence answered. DJ went and told Lewis. Stephen, Kelvin, Joe, and Leslie were playing spud. Stephen was it. Everyone else had a number. Stephen had to throw the ball up in the air and call out a number. The person who had the number had to try to catch it. Can I play, said Terrence. No, said Kelvin. You'll just kick it over the fence. No, said Joe. No way, said John. No, said Leslie. Sure, said Stephen. Newcomers are it. He gave the ball to Terrence. Just throw the ball up in the air. Call out a number between one and five. Okay, said Terrence. The children formed a circle around Terrence. A million, yelled Terrence as he kicked the ball over the fence. What'd you do that for? Asked Stephen. Eat a frog, warthog, said Terrence. Stephen ran and told Lewis. Terrence looked around. There was nothing to do. There was no balls left. Lewis walked up to him. He was followed by Allison, Rondi, Damien, DJ, Stephen, Calvin, Joe, John, and Leslie. What's the matter, Terrence? asked Lewis. There are no balls, said Terrence. Do you have a green ball? No, said Lewis. All my balls have mysteriously disappeared. Darn it, said Terrence. There's nothing left to kick. Nothing left to kick, asked Lewis. Oh, I don't know about that. What do you think, Rondi? Is there anything left to kick? Rondi thought a minute. Then she smiled. She was missing her two front teeth. Yes, there is something left to kick, she said. Well, what is it, asked Terrence. Let me check with Allison. And Lewis, said Lewis. Allison, is there anything left to kick? He winked at her. There sure is, said Allison. Wait, what? Asked Terrence. How about you, Damien, asked Lewis. Can you think of anything? Damien nodded his head yes. Well, what is it, asked Terrence. He couldn't wait. DJ, we got anything around here to kick? Asked Lewis. DJ smiled. Yes, we do, he said. Give it to me, give it to me, Terrence demanded. I don't know if we should, said Lewis. What do you think, Calvin? Should I let him? I think you should, said Calvin. You heard Calvin, said Terrence. Give it to me. Not so fast, said Lewis. Leslie, should I give it to him? Oh, yes, I think he deserves it, said Lewis. Give Terrence repeated. Do you think he deserves it, Joe? asked Lewis. I think so, said Joe. What about you, John? asked Lewis. Definitely give it to him, John answered. Come on, come on, said Terrence. Recess is almost over. We'll leave it up to Stephen, said Lewis. Whatever he says. Leave it, let him have it, said Stephen. You heard him, Lewis, said Terrence. Let me have it. Okay, said Lewis. He picked up Terrence and kicked him over the fence. And those are the end of those two chapters. All right, we'll start off next session with a girl named Joy. <laughs>